Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about target earnings. Then we'll hit the charts. Then we'll go over my results for the day and my thoughts going into tomorrow. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day that the markets are open as well as Sundays, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So moving over to Target Earnings, they did okay, squeaking out a small gain here at 1% from the same period last year. This is good for Target because they've been struggling. Walmart did very well. We talked about their earnings already, but Target struggled. They had a lot of inventory and they kind of purchased the wrong things. They were basically buying durables when the market was not wanting durables and they had a lot of inventory to sit on. And that really hurt their balance sheet, but they managed to do okay here. But notably, they did lower their forward guidance to $7.75 to $8.75, which was below the $9.23 expected by Wall Street for the full year guidance. So they are expecting a slowdown in retail. We've been talking about that for a while. People just aren't buying the same amount of stuff. The economy is slowing slightly. But looking at their earnings per share, they did fairly well, $1.89 compared to $1.40. Revenue, $31.4 billion versus $30.72 billion. So it's good that they got their expectations back in line versus their last earnings call, and they managed to do a little better here. But this is yet another indicator that the economy is slowing, and we do have to pay attention to that as investors and traders. Moving over to the charts here, starting with the S&P 500 on the hour and the four-hour chart. You can see we had a rally into the mid-session, looked quite strong throughout the day, sitting up around 399 at the high of day, all the way up to 399.26 or so. Looking at the volume profile, still sitting right here at that 397.50 level, fell a lot in this last hour of the day, which was very weak, took out these previous lows here. Now you're looking at the next low sitting down at 394 for potential support. So not looking great into the end of day. Looking at the four hour chart though, we are at this lower trend line, retesting that level once again, very close to that level. If we're gonna bounce, we definitely need to bounce now. If we gap through or get a candle break in continuation through this level, then we have some pretty significant downside in my opinion. You're looking at probably around 391, 392, somewhere in this zone. Another 1% of downside potential before you have any realistic chance of a bounce. So we got the rally that we expected. It was bullish going into the day. Could not really get above these previous highs and consolidated throughout the day and then broke down here at the end of day, which like I said before, looks quite weak. And looking at this volume profile, I do want to highlight here, 2 million shares or so were transacted on this last hour of the day, which was extremely weak, demonstrating that this was some pretty big selling at the end of day. And this is likely to continue into tomorrow, in my opinion. Moving over to the NASDAQ on the 15 and the one hour. Similarly, pretty bullish throughout the session, actually made a higher high here. And then we found resistance at the high of day from Monday and broke down really quickly from there. You can see we're in an area of low volume and you would generally expect this area to fail until we get into this next area of higher volume down around 291. We are at this shorter term area of support. You can see this slight trend that we've had does look like a potential move to the upside as possible from here. You can see the highest volume was done at 294 over the last two days. So that's definitely interesting. Looking at momentum, very bearish into the end of day, as you would expect after this big down move. Similarly here on the hourly chart, momentum did dip into the negative across the 50 line on RSI, does look quite weak. We did dip below it just a slightly in the early session and then got right back above it, overthrowing this upper trend line. But like I said, this end of day was very weak and the after hours is quite weak as well. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow here, you can see the Russell did sell off at the end of the day, just like the Dow did. The Dow actually looked pretty weak throughout the session. You can see big red bars here pretty much throughout the session, retesting the low from Friday. The Russell looked quite a bit stronger here, gapping up retesting this previous area of supply, and then came right back down to that highest level of volume at 188. Again, potentially an area where we could bounce, but momentum is weak, and we have had three wicks in this vicinity at 190 here, and I would probably expect a retest of these lows before we get any kind of realistic push through that 190 level to the upside. If we do get above 190 here, then you're looking at about 193 as your next level of resistance. You can see lots of volume done here, low volume through here, generally indicating that you would push through there if you could break out. And then you would find much stronger support as you get into that 
192-193 zone. Otherwise, all the indicators are generally slightly bearish, but the RSI here on the Russell is slightly bullish. Moving over to Apple and Tesla on the four hour, you can see we got that bounce off of the 146 level that we've been talking about for quite a while here on Apple. Retested the 21 EMA here on the four hour, and we're looking to see if this is going to create a higher low here and then a push back up to this next resistance around 150. That would be very bullish in my opinion. Right now, it looks like we're getting rejection and we're looking to see if this is going to bottom maybe down at 146 again maybe a slightly higher low here if we are going to get some bullish price action. But either way, we're still somewhat consolidating. If we zoom out here and look at the volume profile from this most recent move, you can see a lot of trading was done up here at 152. At least half of that was selling around 184 million shares. You can still see some buying at 2.2 million. So still more buying than selling even at these recent highs. Otherwise, the volume is fairly thin here in the middle compared to selling up here, in my opinion. And then lots of transactions back down here between 130 and 133. So pretty interesting. Like I said, if we're going to bounce, you really need it to happen above this 146 level to push back up to 150, maybe even back up to these most recent highs. I would expect 152 to be a pretty strong level of resistance, in my opinion. But otherwise, moving over to Tesla here, not much to add. We got very close to that 214 resistance that we talked about yesterday. And then we sold off from there back into the middle of the range. This range continues to hold. Not much to add here for Tesla. Moving over to transports on the hour and the four hour, similar to the major indices, came into the 200 SMA, almost got to the 144 EMA here on the hourly, found rejection and we sold off, taking out the midpoint here, looking like we're going to move all the way down to probably 229. Most of the volume here was done at 228, so quite a bit of gap before we get to that level. You can see low volume through there. Even if we zoom out, you can see low volume through this zone, and 228 would be your most realistic level of support, maybe even 227. So quite a bit of downside potential here on transports. That 227, 228 level also coincides with the 4-hour 200 SMA and 144 EMAs here. So looking at downside potential if we don't bounce basically right now going into tomorrow's session. Moving over to consumer staples versus discretionary. Interestingly here, consumer staples not really supporting this down move. You can see staples sold off quite a bit. Obviously, staples can move down a little bit and you would expect consumer discretionary to move down more. That's not what we're seeing here. It's making new lows compared to this most recent low, quite below the 19 January lows, 20 January lows. That support is still sitting down around 7150. But we did break out of this range most recently here. You can see lots of volume done at that 73 level. We're starting to break down. Definitely looks weak. Whereas consumer discretionary holding really solid, basically flat on the day. Lots of indecision over the last few days. Quite a lot of selling done here at this level, 37,000 shares, not very much buying at 185,000. But you can see we're right at the level. Even if we zoom out, we're still stuck at that level. We are slightly below it, but momentum is turning slightly bullish. RSI not fully supporting that thesis yet, but otherwise looking at the zone of resistance to the upside. But like I said, discretionary looks a little bit stronger than staples here, which is interesting. Moving over to semiconductors on the hour and the four hour, you can see semis did sell off very similarly, but we are stuck in this range like we talked about before. Didn't quite get up to resistance here, and we didn't get down to support all the way either, so we're still stuck in a zone. Slightly crossing the 50 line here on RSI, momentum is bearish on the hourly. Slightly bullish momentum on the four hour, so definitely mixed on indicators here. That's probably why we're still stuck in this range going forward. Semis not really looking like we're going one way or the other quite yet. If we do break down, though, you're looking at 233 to the downside, that most recent low. If we do break out to the upside, probably looking at around 248 to 50 as your next zone of really serious resistance based on this volume profile. Moving over to yields, not a lot to add here. Basically going sideways over the last two days. 10-year yield has actually been going flat for about four days now. Not a lot to add here on yields. If the two-year breaks out, that will be bearish for stocks. Looks like the 10-year is pretty content to hold around this 290 to 4 level. Otherwise, if we see a little bit of a breakdown in either of these, that would be bullish. But I don't think that that's likely to happen here, at least in the short term. Moving over to the dollar here on the hour and the four hour. You can see we did sell off yesterday based on that really aggressive move higher that we had on Friday. 
did make a slightly lower low here, testing the 144 and 200 SMAs on the hourly. And from there, we got a really bullish move into the close. So that's probably what equities are reacting to. Looks like the dollar is likely to go higher tomorrow, probably back up to this 150.24 level. Seems like a decent level of resistance based on this previous move higher, which still would be a pretty significant move from here. Looking at four hour, we're right at that level. If we get a candle break in continuation to that zone, that's going to be bearish for stocks. But we could certainly double top at this previous level and get the breakdown from there. We now have a high, a midpoint here with a little bit of a double bottom. If we double top here and then break down, coming back down into maybe this 103.65 level that we were watching here previously, maybe even slightly higher at 104.1, that would give equities a little bit of a boost. It's worth noting that the RSI here is just retesting that SMA. If it's going to continue, you would want to see it break from here, pretty much right here on the next candle. If we do get a rejection from the SMA and we push through the 50 line, that's going to be bearish for the dollar. And maybe we see a little bit of a boost in equity tomorrow. Moving over to JNK here on the four hour and the hourly chart. You can see we've had this most recent run up retesting this resistance line, retesting the 200 SMA on the four hour pretty much throughout last week. But we did start to get a fade here today. We did get below the 200 SMA on the four hour. You can see hourly momentum is slightly bearish as well. Lots of volume done up in this previous zone at $93, $93.15. And you can see that was actually quite a bit of selling around 587,000 shares sold and only 493 bought. So you can see selling done in this previous range, pretty thin through this 92 to 93 zone. Looking at this volume profile here, you can see there was definitely some buying done here at 90 and 91 dollars. So maybe we come back into this zone at the support line, find some support and then continue higher. So this is a shorter term retrace, certainly possible. But right now, it does look bearish going into tomorrow's session. Moving over to TLT on the four hour and the daily, not a ton to add here. We're still consolidating in this zone. Looks like we found some decent support. Solid volume here at 101. Still a lot of volume done up here at 106, 107. So this is definitely going to be a really strong area of resistance if we manage to get up that high. But right now, it does seem like we have a solid bottoming formation put in. We have a nice midpoint up to that 102.50 level. You would want to see this push to that level and break to the upside if it's going to happen. Otherwise, we're still watching basically this $100, $120 level to see if we're going to break down to this 99.50, which was the midpoint going back here. If this does break, though, you can see not a ton of volume going back to this most recent low. Lots of volume done in here. If it breaks down, not going to find some support until we get into these lows here going back to October. Otherwise, looking at the daily chart does look slightly bullish. Still sitting at the 9 EMA on the daily chart. You'd want to see a candle break in continuation, take out this midpoint tomorrow if possible, and then get through the 50 line on RSI. Overall momentum, slightly bullish here on TLT. Moving over to the VIX here, you can see it is slightly bullish here on the hourly chart going into the close. Did break down pretty much throughout the session. Didn't quite get as low as I thought. Still looking at 20 or 1950 as a level of support. So a little bit more downside to me. That's what I'm looking for. I do think that that's still going to happen based on this trend. Does seem like we're going to get at least a moderate bounce, maybe up to 21, 2150 in this zone. So we get a little bit of a sell off, allow the VIX to kind of recover to the upside, find resistance in here, find some support in equities and let this sell off back down to this previous low at around 1980. Or down here at about 1950, which would be the highs here at this midpoint on February 16th. That's really what I'm looking at. A nice little move down, find that lower low, which makes this look a little bit more dramatic, allow equities to rally a little bit, and then we start to see that spike back up here on the VIX. It's worth noting that the four hour momentum is starting to fade here. The four hour is ticking in the bullish direction just slightly. RSI is still saying that this is a bearish trend, but RSI on the hourly did tick up here and get some bullish momentum on the MACD. So definitely some conflicting signals, and you'll have to keep an eye on this one going into tomorrow's session. Moving over to my accounts here, you can see I did make a little bit of money. Ended up leaving these IWM covered calls here at 188. I don't think we're going to have too much of an up move here in the IWM. Probably going to stay flat tomorrow. You can see we were only down three cents, which is fine in terms of covered calls. I did end up picking up a few puts here at 292, 
pretty much right at the end of the session for 66 cents. Those have since rallied a little bit all the way up to about a dollar. The NASDAQ did struggle into the end of the session, which is not great for this put position. If we don't get a little bit of a bounce early in tomorrow's session, I'll probably get out of these puts. Just seemed like we were a little bit oversold into the close, so I'll We'll keep an eye on that position going into tomorrow. Otherwise, I did roll these calls one more time. Ended up being a little bit of a mistake here, but you can see I did help cover some of my losses. $274 on these calls, and there's about another $2 of potential upside on these calls. Obviously, I want the markets to rally into tomorrow's session. Still moderately bullish, but mostly protected by these options, at least a little bit to the downside. I did forget to mention that any down moves that have been at least fairly obvious. I've been covering, I've been protecting myself with futures. So I have been maintaining a slightly bullish posture unless the markets really look terrible. And then any major down moves I've been covering with futures to help protect myself from those down moves. Anyway, definitely let me know down in the comment section what you think the market is going to do tomorrow or what charts you think I should be watching. Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.